Welcome to my channel, detailing events throughout the decades. 1999 Columbine School Shooting It was around 11.19 in the morning of April 20 when Dylan Cobalt and Eric Harris began shooting at their fellow students at Columbine High School. Both came dressed in trench coats. Eric Harris was 18 years old, and Dylan Cobalt was aged 17. By 11.35 that morning, the pair had killed 12 fellow students, and a teacher. And wounded around 20 others. Many of the victims of the shooting had been shot while inside the library. After the pair left the library, they entered the science area, where they began a fire in an empty storage closet. This was quickly extinguished by a teacher. The pair eventually re-entered the library, and once inside, just after 12 p.m., the pair turned their guns on themselves and committed suicide. After the shooting, police were heavily criticized for their slow response to the shooting. Police and sheriff's deputies believed at the time of their arrival that there was still a continued danger, and did not move into the area until several hours later. By this time, some of the victims inside had bled to death. This resulted in the introduction of the immediate action rapid deployment tactic, which is now used in situations where an active shooter is still trying to kill people. The families of the students and staff were asked to gather at nearby Leewood Elementary School to await information. Students, teachers, and school employees were taken away and questioned, before being bused to meet their awaiting family. The family members of those who were killed were told to wait for one of the final buses, which never came. After the shooting, investigators learned that both Dylan and Eric had arrived separately that morning. They had walked into the school cafeteria and placed two duffel bags containing propane bombs, which were set to explode as the cafeteria was busy with students. It is then believed that the pair returned back to their cars where they waited for the bombs to detonate. Luckily these bombs failed to detonate, which is why the investigators believe that the pair went into the school on a shooting spree. In addition to the bombs in the cafeteria, bombs were also found in their cars, which was later found out that these were there to detonate and kill emergency personnel responding to the incident. It was found that the pair were members of a group of outcasts known as the Trench Coat Mafia. It was also speculated that the pair had carried out the shootings in retaliation for being bullied, but the true motive still remains unclear. The pair left behind journals which showed investigators that they had been planning this day for about a year. It was found that the pair had wanted to rival the Oklahoma City bombing and cause the most deaths in U.S. history. It is believed that if the bombs had detonated as planned, the pair could have killed hundreds of students and staff members in the cafeteria. Everything had been documented in these journals. Columbine High School finally reopened in the fall of 1999, but the massacre had had a great impact on the community. After the shooting at Columbine, other schools across America introduced new measures to ensure this wouldn't happen again. Some introduced metal detectors for students to go through, trying to stop any illegal weapons being brought into the school. Some also introduced security guards. Most of the schools introduced zero-tolerance rules regarding disruptive behavior and threats of violence from students. The shooting also resulted in more gun control measures. It was found that both Dylan Cobalt and Eric Harris had part-time jobs at a local blackjack pizza place. And it is believed that another worker, Philip Duran had introduced them to Mark Maney's. Mark Maney's was the person who had sold a gun to the pair, and also brought them 100 rounds of ammunition the day before the shooting. Mark Maney's was arrested and sentenced to six years in prison. Philip Duran who had introduced the pair to Maney's, was also given a prison sentence. After the massacre, survivors and relatives of those who were killed filed lawsuits. Most of the cases were against the police department and the school district, but these were dismissed by the federal court. However, in April 2001, 
the families of more than 30 victims did receive a $2,538,000 settlement in their case against the families of Eric Harris, Dylan Cobalt, Mark Manes, and Philip Duran. After the shooting, several memorials were created. One of these was Rachel Scott's car. Rachel was the first person to be shot that day. Also John Tomlin's truck was created as a memorial. John was one of the students who had been killed in the library. On April 30, 15, six-foot wooden crosses were erected to honor those who had died that day. Two of these were meant for the gunman, but were quickly cut down by Daniel Rohrbau's father, who had lost his son in the shooting. The official Columbine Memorial was opened to the public on September 21, 2007. Forever Remembering Rachel Scott, aged 17 The first person to be shot that day. Daniel Rohrbau, aged 15 Died while in the library. Dave Saunders, aged 47 The teacher who rushed into the cafeteria to warn other students, after hearing the gunfire. Kyle Velasquez, aged 16 Died while in the library. Stephen Kernow aged 14. The youngest victim that day. Cassie Bernal, aged 17. Died while in the library. Isaiah Schulz, aged 18. Died while in the library. Matthew Kector, aged 16. Died while in the library. Lauren Townsend, aged 18. Died while in the library. John Tomlin, aged 17. Died while in the library. Daniel Mauser, aged 15. Died while in the library. Corey DePuter, aged 17. Died while in the library. Kelly Fleming, aged 16. Died while in the library. May all of you never be forgotten. Thank you for watching and learning about these events which happened over the decades. Please subscribe to my channel, to view other tragic events which have now become part of history.